During the Soviet occupation, there were two official languages in Latvia, Latvian and Russian. In reality, however, the Russian language was forced upon the nation and dominated everyone's lives. It was only in 1991 that Latvians regained their language together with their independence. In 2012, reactionary politicians in Latvia proposed that Russian be given the status of a second state language in the country. They collected sufficient signatures to force a national referendum on the matter. Two weeks before the referendum, public opinion surveys showed that the weights were starting to lean toward bilingualism. The Latvian majority was passive, apathetic, and self-confident about the result. Some Latvians disbelieved the survey results, others were offended by the state's frugality processes during the crisis, and they basically ignored political events. Fully 43% of Latvians said that they would not be voting in the referendum. The activities of the remaining defenders of the Latvian language were scrambled and difficult to notice. Even the president of Latvia said that he would not be voting in the controversial referendum. Those supporting bilingualism in turn were active and coordinated. They organized a powerful campaign under the slogan, Now or Never, mobilizing nearly all supporters of two state languages in Latvia, as well as many of those who had not yet taken a firm decision on the matter. A group of activists decided to change the situation, but the question was how to bring together the scattered majority so as to create a large, unified and attractive campaign. The goal was not just to win in the referendum, but also to ensure as high a percentage as possible of voters supporting the Latvian language. We created the social movement Get Up and Go, and everyone could join it. The symbol was a burning chair which symbolized the moment at which you can no longer linger on the sidelines. We brought in strategically selected, well-known and respected people into the process so that the social movement could live its life. Nine days before the referendum, we organized an initial event to announce the Get Up and Go campaign and its message. People were asked to become ambassadors for the campaign in their homes, neighborhoods and groups of friends. Each photograph that was submitted was supplemented with the movement's logo. News about the campaign spread in a geometrical progression and was firmed up in the media arena. There were hundreds of regional and local press publications, as well as radio and television broadcasts to reflect the idea behind the Get Up and Go movement. The organizers found that their telephones and email boxes were on fire. Popular people from the worlds of culture, sports, music, science, the media and other spheres joined the movement en masse with their messages and their readiness to popularize the campaign. The text, Get Up and Go, appeared on the ice on the Daugava River. We learned that university students carved the text into the ice to show their support for the campaign. Materials from the campaign became viral on the internet and its social networks. Thousands of people used the Get Up and Go symbols on their social network profiles and shared them. During just nine days, several hundred NGOs and opinion leaders became involved in the campaign. In the event, 71.12% of the electorate took part in the referendum. A convincing majority, 74.8%, confirmed support for Latvian as the only state language. Usually inactive émigré Latvians spent long hours at precincts this time to cast their votes. Many precincts proved to be unready for such a great influx of voters. In terms of the number of voters, this referendum attracted the greatest number of people since the restoration of Latvia's independence, and it surprised even the most optimistic experts in terms of their forecasts.